Okay, thank you. I uh, appreciate all of you uh, coming out here. Uh, good afternoon to everybody. Uh, a busy day, a difficult day, and uh, it was important uh, that we all uh, met with our, our players, our leadership council, our coaching staff, our football operations, and our entire front office. Uh, it's a difficult day because of the relationships uh, we have with uh, Coach Zimmer and Rick. Uh, we really thank them for everything uh, that they've done for our organization. Uh, they've brought us to a, to a new level. We're a first class organization, a, a place that I think uh, uh, any coach or GM will want to come to. And uh, we strongly believe we need new leadership to elevate our football team. And our goal is to consistently contend and win championships. We have a plan for how we're going to move forward. We're going to utilize our relationships and network of resources to make the best possible choice. Uh, the process will be methodical, comprehensive, and we're looking for strong leaders, uh, communicators, uh, collaborators. Again, we have tremendous appreciation for our fans, and we want to bring them the championships uh, that they expect and deserve. Uh, with that, I'll open up for questions. Thank you. All right, we'll start with Joe Schmidt, followed by Chad Graff. Yes, Mark, I'm just wondering, you talked about the process. Who's going to be involved in the process, and, and what exactly are you looking for? And I, I would take it you're looking for a GM before you hire a coach. Would that be correct? Yes, Joe, good to see you. That, that is correct. We're going to, we're going to start out. Uh, uh, we're, we're, both uh, searches are starting right away, uh, but the GM is going to be our first selection, and then the GM will have input in the head coach. But we've begun our process right away. Like I said, it's an internal process. And uh, it's something we have uh, great football operations uh, people here in the building. And uh, we're going to lean on them as well as our relationships in the league and, and elsewhere. So the process has already begun. And uh, we know there are a lot of good candidates. And at the same time, we know that this is a uh, highly desirable uh, uh, place for people to be. We have a, a great core of talent, a great uh, uh, facilities, a great fan base, great communities. So, uh, we're confident we're uh, on a good process, and uh, we've already gotten start started on that work. Mark, as you make these changes to the top two positions, would you call this kind of a traditional full rebuild, or wh what would you say the expectations are for 2022? Again, I, I don't want to get into a full rebuild conversation. My, our point is we have high expectations for this football team. Uh, we believe we can... Uh, uh, be uh, super competitive right here in 2022. This is not in that, that mode of a full rebuild. Again, we believe we have a strong, strong foundation here on the field and around the building. So um, I, I wouldn't classify it as that. Uh, again, we looked at our football team in its entirety. And uh, as much as a difficult decision as it was, we feel it's the time and place to go in a different direction and get us to the next level, which is where we all want to be. Right, uh, Dave Campbell followed by Courtney Cronin. Hi, Mark. I'm just wondering at what point this season um, or recently that became clear that you needed to make the change in, in both of those uh, areas. Well, Dave, clearly it was, it, it, it's been, uh, this is not a, a situation where we do things in a knee jerk fashion. We're very proud of the fact that we, as an ownership, try to think long term. We know we want to be consistent, but at the same time, we evaluated where we've been at, a lot of factors go into it. Uh, we evaluated uh, not just this season, but a whole body of work. There's no one person uh, that's responsible, but we're clearly disappointed uh, in, 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 the, in the football uh, results this year. And uh, over the course of the past few weeks, this is something we've been thinking and deliberating quite a bit on. And over this past week, we kind of finalized uh, this direction that we're beginning on now. Mark, the Wolf Ownership Group has poured a lot of resources into making this roster as good as it can possibly be. And I'm wondering, after the amount of uh, resources you guys poured into the defense this side of the this year to try to get it back to where it was a couple of years ago, how disappointing was it that it was never able to get back to where it was when it was the number one unit and carrying this team? Well, listen, the, the, the uh, results speak for themselves. We're not satisfied. Uh, it's not where we want to be, but again, we have an excellent organization. We have great, great components of a roster here to build on. So I think any coach and GM knows there's something to build off here. And again, we're fully committed as owners to providing the resources to make sure we can keep competing year in and year out at the highest levels and try to get championships. So yes, it's been disappointing. 
uh, uh, and not, not about defense or offense, but the overall results for sure are not what we expect and what we want. So that's the, uh, that's the spirit we made this decision. And uh, I think the fans and people that care about the Minnesota Vikings, we as ownership want to make them proud. Uh, we want them to have championships that they deserve. And that's kind of what led us to the decision. And uh, it's not about one side of the ball or one individual or another, but we just feel a change of direction was needed here. Let's go with Arif followed by Matthew. Hi, what led to the decision to lead the search internally as opposed to hiring a search firm? Well, again, like I said, we, have, uh, we know the people in this building. Uh, we have a lot of confidence in the football uh, uh, IQ of this building, and there's a lot of great scouts, great operations people, uh, people that know how to hire, and uh, so we're confident in that. And again, um, getting back to, to Rick and Mike, it's not about any individuals because we are in a better uh, place as an organization because of their work, but we're just trying to elevate off this foundation we have here and uh, get to the next level. So we do feel we have the resources here to do the search internally. Um, we know we're not, uh, as ownership, uh, making the decision ourselves. We have a lot of great input with a lot of great thought going into it from around this building and around the league. And uh, that's how we're gonna make this decision. And we're gonna be thoughtful about it. We're not gonna rush to it. We're gonna be deliberate. We're gonna be thorough. We're not gonna say we have to have this or we have to have that. We wanna get uh, people that are great communicators, great leaders, that know how to create a culture that, that people can uh, uh, thrive on the field, off the field, uh, all around. So that's, that's how we're going about this. Hi, Mark. Um, just wanted to ask where <clears throat> the quarterback decision for the future fits in with interviews for general manager, interviews for coach, um, and uh, how much input you're going to have yourself as ownership, like if you have uh, kind of a, a direction that you want it to go and, and you want that to align with the people that you hire? Well, we as ownership, I think, hopefully know. We know what we don't know, and we're going to leave it to, uh, we're going to make sure we hire the right people as general manager and head coach, and they're the ones that are going to really uh, get the proper input, give us the evaluation, give us their advice and thinking before we make any of those decisions. So first things first is we got to get the new leadership in place at the Vikings here. Uh, in, the, in the relatively near future, but not to rush it, but we want to be deliberate about it. But at that point, once that leadership's in place, we'll discuss things like roster and, and coaching staffs and scouting staffs and all the rest. But first, we've got to get our leadership in place. And like I said, we've, we've begun that process right away. And um, again, we want to elevate our team. We have high expectations, and we want to create sustained success. That's always been our goal, and uh, we're going to keep at it. Uh, ben Gessling, Sam Ekstrom. Yeah, Margaret, you guys have, have put an emphasis on uh, diversity and trying to diversify your staff in a lot of ways over the last couple of years. As you get the opportunity now to kind of rethink your football staff, how important is it going to be to get a diverse set of candidates in the room for interviews and um, to think about that as you go through your process? Well, we're certainly proud of our support of the Rooney Rule and all the diversity uh, uh, Rules. I think that direction is something the league should be going in, and we embrace that. And like I said, we want to have uh, the highest expectations for our GM and coach, and that includes making sure the net is cast wide. That includes diversity. It includes all kinds of background. It includes all kinds of experience. So uh, we're not limiting, and we certainly embrace, and we're very proud of our track record, and we're going to continue to be uh, elevating where we can in that area. Hey, Mark, um, you know, even since hiring Mike Zimmer, the, the league seems to be heading in a much more offensive direction, very passing oriented, very analytics driven in a lot of the decision making. I guess, how do you take all of that into account as you look um, to make these new hires? Well, there are a million factors that go into it, but let, let me just go back to what I said earlier. We want strong leaders. We want people that communicate and collaborate around the building. and. Uh, from that, we're going to get the right minds, the right offensive minds, the right defensive minds, the right scouting. So that's the spirit we're doing this in, and uh, that's our first criteria, getting the right kind of leaders that our players can relate to, uh, our fans can relate to. So it's, a, it's not, a, not a simple, uh, a simple question, but I know um, we're, going to, we're going to get there. Okay, we'll go to Mike Max, followed by Chris Thomason.
Chris, why don't you go ahead? We'll come back to Mike. Yeah, hey, Mark, just first a real quick question, then maybe I can have a follow. Um, is everybody else remaining intact on staff, including Adam Zimmer? Uh, yeah, as far, again, uh, we have different coaches and staff that are under contract, and right now, as far as today goes, um, we're just talking about Coach Zimmer and, and Rick. Our coaching staff, though, everyone who remains under contract is under contract. But again, our focus is on a new head coach, a new general manager, and those decisions on, on, on everyone else will, will have to be working together with that leadership. But right now, uh, we have uh, pretty much everyone under contract, mostly, and uh, that's how we'll go from here. And then my follow was just what is the – you don't see – it happened a lot that a team fires their GM and coach at the same time. What are the challenges of that situation where, as you know, there's a rush to go after these, quote, hot coaching candidates, but if you guys are hiring the GM first, it doesn't seem like, at least for coaching, that it's going to be an imminent decision on naming a coach. Well, we don't try to look at who's hot and who's cold because we're just looking at the criteria I spoke about, which is great leaders, great communicators, and great collaborators. And I know there are a lot of good people, um, and it's, like I said, a highly desirable position to be uh, leading the Minnesota Vikings, a storied franchise with a great fan base and a great community. So I'm confident we'll be okay there. And I'm not, we're not gonna get caught up in any kind of frenzies in terms of chasing this one or that one. We're gonna be deliberate, we're gonna be thorough, and we're gonna get the kind of leaders that our players will wanna follow and will get a success on and off the field. So. That's how we're approaching it, and uh, that's how we're going about it. All right, let's go back to Mike Max. And hey, thanks, Jeff. Him. Thanks, Mark. Good to see you. Hey, good to see you, Mike. Um, uh, COVID, obviously, it was different. Every team dealt with it. The Vikings had a lot of high-profile players, and there's a chance this could be around next fall again. D how much does that enter into GM and coach and how they handle it, and, and did – the way that it played out for the Vikings have anything to do with the dismissal of, of Rick Spielman and Mike Zimmer and that you couldn't get everybody to buy it? Well, you know, uh, these issues with COVID and vaccinations, we, we made our, our, our position clear last summer about how we feel about the safety and health of our players and the importance of vaccination. But as far as the decision, um, there were a variety of factors. It was no one factor. It was an overall body of, of the work. And really, again, like I said, um, Coach Zimmer and Rick, it's a difficult day for us. They're good people. Uh, we've had a great working relationship with them for years. And uh, we're proud of the work we've gotten to. But we felt now is the time to make a change. Uh, it's time to uh, get a new, new fresh air to the uh, enterprise and to try to win championships and get us to the next level. So it wasn't just COVID. It wasn't one person. It wasn't this or that. It's an overall look at it and a lot of factors to say we as ownership and we as an organization feel we need to move in a new direction and to try to see how we can get to the next level. Were there any lessons you felt you learned during your last uh, head coaching search that you could apply going forward? Well, I think like I, I th one thing I want to bridge back to is, uh, a, again, um, the, these searches are complicated, and uh, the last time we, we, we had a search is different totally than now. Again, it was eight years ago uh, when we, we hired Coach Zimmer. I think the, uh, this goes for hiring in any position, CEO of anything or any kind of position. You want to be thorough and deliberate about the process and not be too reactive. So we're going to be methodical about it. We're going to spend time with the candidates. Uh, I think there's a lot more... Um, information out there about all the candidates so we'll have a better sense of things and uh, that's how we're approaching it so um, it's not easy to get it right but we're going to keep striving to get it right and like I said we have a plan in place and we're, we feel really strong and good about the plan we have to, to begin our process. We'll go with just a few more questions here I see Larry has his hand raised so we'll start Larry and then we'll go to Mark. Mark good to be with you. Uh... Are you looking through the league office for potential candidates for both the GM and uh, and the head coach at all? Is that a consideration? Well, there, 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 again, there, there's no stone will be left unturned. So whether it's league office or our, our relationships around the league or uh, as far as GM, we're open to any idea. We want to have 
uh, again, strong leaders. So that can come from a variety of sources. And uh, again, we don't want to pigeonhole that it's going to be this type of person, that type of person, this type of coordinator, that type of coach. Uh, we want to be open-minded to hear what's out there, to see what's out there. And every season is different in these searches. And uh, this year is no different. But like I said, the one thing we feel good about is we're a place that uh, coaches and GMs want to be. And uh, that should help us uh, to, to, to have a really strong uh, uh, people that can be head coach and GM for us. As a follow-up, uh, considering that over the last 10, 12 years, the Super Bowl champion, uh, no quarterback has conched this organization in terms of more than 8% of the cap. Is that something that uh, hurt this organization, you think, that helped put it in this position? Well, again, when it comes to, you mentioned the quarterback or any other position, and looking backwards, we're about looking, you know, as, as much as we want to thank uh, Rick and Mike to where we've gotten to, uh, today's as much about going forward. So we're going to get a head coach and GM in place, and then we're going to get to work with them and evaluate those kind of decisions. Where our roster fits, what we have, what we don't have, what we need. Uh, it's not a simple answer on all this, so um, we'll get to work on that. And uh, I don't want to be a... a to, to use the phrase, a Monday morning quarterback on this situation because we have to look forward and we're going to bring in the right people to help us evaluate the answer to that question. Uh, hey, you said earlier that you did not want to get in the conversation about a full rebuild. So is this a situation that you see as a potential quick fix? I do believe we have great parts in place here, absolutely. Um, again, our roster, um, what, what we have here, uh, some, some great talent. And uh, I think, you know, again, this past season, a lot of close games. I think it was some kind of uh, historical record, the amount of uh, one-score games we had. So we know we're a situation we're close. But, you know, again, we're, we're going to take a look at the entire situation with the coach and the new GM, uh, and we're on, the, we're on the path to get that going. But uh, I do feel we can be a contender in 2022, and uh, that's the way we view it. Okay, we'll go the last the last three questions here. Joe Schmidt, uh, Courtney Cronin, Ben Gessling. Yeah, Mark, I, I know that the Wills have a very close relationship uh, with Rick Spielman, so that had to be extremely hard. Was there any consideration given to uh, putting Rick in a different position in the organization? Well, you know, Rick's given 100% uh, to this organization, his body and soul. He's uh, as Coach Zimmer, and uh, we couldn't be more grateful for what they've done. Uh, not just for the organization, the team, the community, and our, our ownership and our family as well. But, you know, we looked at this decision uh, on all, all kinds of ways, and this is the way we came out on this decision. And uh, we only wish the best for Rick and his family and Coach Zimmer and his family, and that, that's the spirit we made the decision. It was not an easy decision. It's a difficult day for all around, and this is part of the territory uh, of this business, and we, we recognize that. But... We only have high regard and best, best wishes for, for, for both of them and their families. Mark, when you, when you talk about um, the need of, for leadership and being able to have leaders, coaches, general manager that relate to the players, do you feel like the philosophy of this team and maybe the message that's being delivered to players needs to change because maybe at this point it grew a little stale with this group and as players are getting younger and coaches are getting older, do you, do you see value in that? There could be value in that. Again, all, all I know is, and what we know, we, we judge a lot of factors, and we see what's, what, you know, you are what your record is, you are what your results are in this business, and we looked at that totality, and we just felt there needs to be a change. That could be part of that, and uh, it certainly will be an evaluation going forward how we can address that as well, but um, we, we felt it's time to make a change. Mark, you mentioned the executives and, and talent you have in the building. Who do you specifically plan to have sitting down to interview the candidates that you'll be looking at for the general manager and coaching spots in the next couple of weeks here? Again, we have, we have a lot of leadership on the business side as well as on the football ops side um, who are going to participate in the committee. We're just having a conversation on how we're going to go about it, divvy up responsibilities. But believe me, uh, we have uh, – the cupboard is not bare. We have a, a – uh, <laughs> Uh, a great amount of football knowledge and wisdom in this building, and we're going to lean on that heavily 
uh, to get that going. I'd rather not get into the specifics of who and what, but, but we have a plan in place. Uh, we're gonna, like I said, the process will be methodical, comprehensive, and uh, I'm confident we're gonna come out with a good, clear direction that will excite our players, our, our, our fans, and uh, get us moving in a good direction. Great.